Hey everyone, Thoughts Steve here, here at the Mercury Division of the Person Texas District Championship here at 6369 Mercenary Robotics. What an amazing team th this season so far. Winners of the Belton and Amarillo District event. Gotta check out this amazing robot with a slapper for algae and amazing coral mechanism as well as a pivoting funnel for their climber. What an amazing robot and season they've had so far. So let's get down here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. Isaac, let's start off with you. Talk to us about your elevator that you guys have going on over here and then we'll continue from there. Uh, we are running a two-stage cascading elevator using a mix of thrift bot and WCP parts. And then we've also, to maximize height, we actually custom cut our own plates to flip around where the different parts go. So normally a sprocket goes above, but on this we put it below. Uh, it goes up in less than a second and we're running a 9 to 1 ratio on it with two crackers. Now one thing that we saw earlier was your funnel that pivots and, uh, for the coral, but I assume for the climber as well. Talk about your funnel that you have. So our funnel was interesting this year. Uh, we at first, we curved the bottom to try and get it to go in and not get airtime, but turns out that made it worse. So we actually flattened it and raised the walls to prevent any bouncing out. Uh, it start, the reason it starts down at the beginning of the match is because it extends outside our frame perimeter to minimize the amount of dropped coral we get. And then at the end of the match, it flips down for our climber mechanism. Oh, and we use a uh, silicone lubricant on it to make sure the coral goes in nice and smooth. Silicone lubricant? Yeah. And uh, it... This stuff. And it's worked really well for the coral? Oh just... yeah, it's worked great. Now, what, uh, let's head over to Nisseth to talk about your dry base. Everything is connected to it, your funnel, your, uh, your elevator. Talk to us about the dry base that you have, and then we'll walk through it to your end effector. All right, so moving on to our drive base, we use the X2Ts from WCP. Uh, we have 11 tooth uh, pinions for our drive, so it goes pretty fast, but it still has enough torque to uh, move our robot around reliably. And uh, we have uh, two main cross beams attached here and here, and our elevator is supported on one of them, and the other one supports our climber. And we have cross beams going from our elevator and our funnel that prevent uh, forward and back motion on it. We also have side cross beams for our elevator wobble, and it's all connected to our drive base side rails. Uh, and moving on, we have uh, a special bumper that we use to counterbalance. One of y'all want to grab this? Yep. Uh, we have two steel plates, uh, which act as counterbalance for every time we climb, and they're incorporated in our back right bumper. Now let's talk about this uh, manipulator that you guys have seems to be running on a cracking X44. Talk to us about that and has uh, how the lubricant also helps with your mechanism. Yep. So at the beginning of the season, we realized that we could uh, score on all levels with one uh, angle manipulator. We didn't need a pivot or anything. And uh, uh, we found out a design that follows all of those levels. It has two pairs of rollers at the top and bottom to hold the coral in place as a beam brake sensor. Uh, that every time the coil hit, breaks the sensor, it stops these rollers uh, and it follows a straight line with our funnel uh, that brings the coral in the same place every time. Uh, and we can have Brady demonstrating the manipulator. Yep. And it works really reliably. You can demonstrate that one more time. 
And yeah, we run a Kraken X44 with a 3 to 1 uh, gearing ratio so we can keep it in brake mode and hold coral inside. And I see you guys are using the reflective tape for that beam brake yes. that you also have. Yes. Now let's we'll hand it over to Grayson to talk about this climber that you guys have. Talk to us about that. Okay, so at the beginning of the season, we decided that climb was something we had to do. It guaranteed a ranking point almost every match. So in, our, in the original design, we started with the two pitch fork Rust Hounds climb, but after testing with that, it was unreliable and the steel bolts we were using were starting to bend. After that, we pivoted to the Everybot climb, which has been super reliable. It locks in really well. A problem we had with that is that whenever we would in, uh, intake the cage, it would sort of slop down here. So we add this back uh, protector here and it just holds it and keeps it super reliable. As mentioned before by Isaac, the funnel folds down and it fits perfectly in between these two beams. And it just, I love it, it's amazing. So the, the climber is ran by a Kraken X60 on a 125 on a gearbox, the 1872 tooth uh, the sprocket, uh, super reliable. In the beginning, we were using a aluminum shaft before we switched to a steel shaft because the aluminum shafts would twist really easily. And then we also switched from just a bolt and washer to secure the shaft into these shafts, the clamping shaft collars, which are just a ton more reliable. So we have seen a few teams have a similar type of climb, but you got, but usually with a winch. How is this able to work without a winch? Okay, so it's due to the high torque that the Kraken motor gets through all of the reductions that we use. Also, it's really stable because of these back supports here and the side supports here and here, which are connecting to our central support tube here. And it's just super stable. Our robots had no problem with it this year outside of the aluminum shaft, which we swapped to this steel. And it's just been super reliable. We also have this front support tube here to prevent it from uh, twisting backwards this way. And that just keeps all of our robot stable and supported. And it doesn't bend even with a, over 135 pounds of stress. Now, I, one thing that's really special and unique to your robot is the algae slapper. Talk about this algae slapper that you guys have. Alrighty, so big problem this year was that you need to get uh, algae off the reef to score L3s and L2s. So in the beginning, we only had our coral manipulator to score L4, and then we realized about halfway through the build season, we needed a way to get algae off the reef. We started with, originally with a processor and L1 mechanism, but that was too flimsy to work. So then we pivoted to this. So it's a simple arm that just runs a single uh, Kraken X40 to a single wheel. It works super well. It can de-score both high and low algae. Uh, the entire system is ran by a Kraken X60 here to another sprocket here. Uh, the, uh, the, pul uh, the pulley is ran from a double reduction from one pulley to the other down here. It's just super fast. It's super quick. It's super reliable. An uh, issue we had in the be uh, beginning of the season was that whenever we would hit the algae and head on, this belt would slip off here. We solved that by uh, adding this uh, standoff in the center here. It just keeps the tension, it keeps us on, and it makes it super reliable. Now let's head over to Brady to talk about all the programming that goes on. You have a sensor over here, you can see two Limelight 4s. Talk about the programming that goes on. So the biggest improvement we made this year to our software was adding the three line lights that we have on our robot, three. two on the front, and then we kind of have one hidden all the way back up here on top of our elevator. And these two in the front are our most essential line lights. We use them both in autonomous and in teleop to know where we are in the field so that we can have accurate vision measurements all the time. We have two, which is kind of unique on our robot so that we can see the tag at all times, even when we're pushing all the way up against the reef, like we are in both autonomous and teleop. The one on the back is used only in autonomous to see the source so that we're able to drive to it in the same exact spot every time so that the coral can go straight down our funnel. Uh, talking a little bit more about these uh, reflective sensors, we have two of them on our robot. One of them is right here, and then we have another hidden sensor back here on the funnel. Uh, the one that we use most often is this one on our intake in Teleop. And whenever it senses that the beam got broken or it can't sense a reflection anymore, it stops the rollers, puts them in brake mode, so we have no chance of it slipping out anymore. This one in the back is a little bit more special. It's used in autonomous so that our robot knows whenever a coral is about to go into the intake so that we can leave the source sooner. That saves us time on our auto and it's hopefully going to help us get to that four coral that worlds. Well, 6269, 
doing an amazing job so far this season. Again, two district wins already under your belt. Also one of the contenders for the for the, the Mercury Division on forecast. So good luck to you guys. You guys have an amazing season. So I wish you guys best of the luck. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free, scan the QR code, or go to altair.com contest for further details. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information.